Moses. Hello, and welcome to season one of We Own the Table. I'm Tanya Burke, your host, and on today's episode, we're bringing on a regular sister friend, Tarkessa Coven. I like to call her Tessa. Tessa has been mentoring and coaching business women all around the world. She has produced and published 19 of her own books, many of them bestsellers. She's also been a publishing consultant to over 80 women who produced over 80 books. I mean, Tessa is here today to drop some golden nuggets on us. So stay tuned and listen to all that she has to offer. All right, everyone. Welcome to We Own the Table. I'm Tanya Burke, your terrific host, also known as the political badass. And I'm here today with Tarkessa Colvin. I said it. Let's say it again. Tarkessa Colvin. (laughs) <laughs> and you all just heard, okay, come on, let's be real with each other. You heard all the fantastic things that this woman has done. She doesn't just own the table. Y'all, I think she built the table. I think she mm-hmm. built the table, and I'm just so glad, you know, <laughs> that she invited me to have a seat at the table with her because, I mean, all the things that she's done, and just don't act like I'm the only one. 19 books in just six years. Girl, it's people out there that can't even write two pages in 19 years. They've been talking about that book for 19 years. (laughs) They have been uh, uh, reading everybody else's books for 19 years. But you have written 19 books in just six years. Yes, ma'am. Oh my goodness. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because that I, that blows me away. You know, I have written a book thanks to uh, the assistance of Tarkesta. We'll talk about that a little later. Uh, but I, you know, I've co, you know, written a book with a group of women in an anthology, but 19 books in six years, I mean, that's just, that's just phenomenal. And I mean, there are so many other sister friends out there who who who, who want to know, like, how, how did that happen? Well, first of all, I have to give myself permission to do it, right? Um, but thank you for the amazing intro. I need you in my life as my life woman. <laughs> I, and and, I, and I, I swear to y'all, she did not pay me. She did not pay me for that intro, but maybe afterwards she might send me a, a, a cash app or something, you know, Tanya Sprilla, you know. <laughs> but going back to your question, writing my team books, giving myself permission to have the words to say, to say, you know what, these words are important to me, right? That's the first thing. Usually the filtering that happens, and you know all this is that, oh, I don't score well, I don't write well enough, I don't exegete and isogee, as they say in church and such. Um, She brought up church, and then we put the church finger up, y'all. Mind your manner, so if you go to the bathroom during this uh, broadcast, I'm gonna need you to mind your manner. (laughs) But yeah, that was the first thing, and then it was an all a part of the process. Right, because I have those same thoughts that everyone else has. I don't have time. That's not true. You do have time. I do set time. I don't know what to write. That's not true. You talk all day, every day. Right? How many words do you say? How many, 
emails do you send? You can communicate. Even if you're telling a fiction story, you got it in your head. You can tell people about it all day long. You have to give yourself permission to do the dang thing, right? <laughs> and that's it. And, and that's the first thing. And then set the time. Stop saying someday, one day. Show me that on the calendar. If you can show me someday on the calendar, then okay, we got a deadline. But otherwise, it's just wishing. And that's why you're not doing it. You're not making it a priority. So everybody that's mad at me, it's okay. It's in love. <laughs> okay, see, I was, okay. I'm glad you, you see, she brought up the mad part. Tarkessa said it, I didn't. So since she said it, I got to bring it up, okay. okay. Um, you know, what I share with you in our private times is our private times, you know, I know that you're not an attorney or anything and we don't have the client uh, attorney privilege, but you yeah. just laid out why you put all my business out there just just now. Uh, giving yourself permission, finding the time. You didn't have to tell all these people my business, Takessa, because um, I went through those same things. I went through those same things for many years when it came to me wanting to write my book. And the one of the points that you brought up about giving yourself permission, you know, can we talk about that a little bit? Because a lot of the work that you're doing today around, um, you know, black women and stereotypes around black women and how we are censored around mm -hmm. how how our culture how this yes. culture uh however you want to call it whether you want to talk you, you want to say it's in the in the black community or you want to say it's the americanized culture whatever but we i feel that as black women we are in a place where a lot of us are not giving ourselves permission no. and that yeah. point that you brought up that really hit that really hit. That really hit me. Can you talk a little bit about that in, in terms of what you're doing right now? So, first of all, you're dead on. Um, I just finished up an article talking about three ways that stereotypes negatively impact women. And it's twofold. You have women in general, and then you have women of color. And so, spoiler alert, I'm going to share, because I love to share, is that it's designed to simply you. It's designed for someone like me who is outspoken anyway to say, uh oh, am I being the angry black woman? Well, maybe I should be quiet or maybe I shouldn't fight this fight. But you know what? Somebody got to do it. Why not you? Right? Um, I had a mentor a year ago and she used to say, somebody's got to be famous. Why not you? Somebody's got to fight for that person or for that cause. Why not you? Somebody's got to show your kids how to stand up and be a boss, male or female. Why not you? And so when you get to that point where, you know what? I can't manage your perception or your perspective, but I can manage how I show up. And you give yourself permission to do that. Things change. Things absolutely change. And that does lead to the work that I do now. It's all around corporate culture, right? That's my jam, corporate culture and diversity. And I specialize in leadership development and engagement strategy. Why? Because we've all been on the job where it's engagement week and you're gonna pass out a bag of candy and you're gonna make me, you're gonna call me up here because I've been answering all these calls for 16 years and you're gonna pat me on the back and then tell me to take a survey and hope that the survey says the com company is a great place to work. Look at my face. What? <laughs> what? Imagine dating somebody and they only cared about you the week of Valentine's Day. Oh, oh no, you didn't. Oh. You're going to be like, oh, you only court me this week, right? I'm only important to you this week. It's the same concept. So I'm calling leaders out and calling leaders up. And the thing is, my purpose is not just to say, you didn't do this right. My purpose is to say, this is where you're missing the mark. And then I have a whole process on how to get you where you need to be. Because, you know, I'm all about steps. <laughs> Tanya, wink, wink. 
<laughs> oh, see, they, they, sister, sister friends, there she go again. You know, there she go again. Just, just put me out there on blast. I, you know, you, you know, and you brought up a great point. You know, in the last few months, we have seen a lot of these, you know, multi-million, multi-billion dollar companies, you know, stepping up. And especially, you know, some of them started beforehand, mm -hmm. but we really saw an influx after the untimely and um, and I'm not going to really go too deep into it because I'll get mad. Um, death yeah. of George Floyd. Mm -hmm. We have seen so many different uh, corporations and, and, and billionaires and, and business leaders coming forward and wanting to some kind of way, I guess, contribute or participate or whatever it is that, that, that they call themselves doing. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes are doing these things without the voice of members of the black community. Mm -hmm. You know, they're stepping forward and saying, hey, we want to engage and be a part of the process and I'm sorry or whatever it is, but it's not including the black community. And oftentimes, especially black women get left out of the equation. And then we're also seeing because of some of these um, activities that some of the employees are engaging in. Um, that's discriminatory practices towards black men and women um, in their businesses and establishments. So we're seeing a lot of them coming to the table saying, oh, well, we're taking a full day today to do this diversity training um, for, you know, for our staff. Yeah. And after they finish this, you know, three, four hour training and have this box lunch of, of soul food or whatever, uh, uh, you know, ethnic uh, restaurant that they decided to partake in for the day because it's a diversity training. Right. Um, they feel that that's going to magically, you know, erase all of these thoughts that these people have had their entire lives. You know, they grew up with these patterns and narratives. And so what is your take on that? Because I know that this is your area of expertise and I know that, you know, you work with a lot of these companies and, and you're yeah. engaging with this in the corporate life. And like you said, that's your that's your jam. Uh, that's your jam. Uh, I mean, what is your take on this? Are, are these things really helpful? So uh, I have the joy of being partnered with a company called Dream4. And together, we're like the Wonder Twins. <laughs> so together, we have created a diversity training. And one of the first things that I do, and I know Jaws about to drop, when I am talking to companies about this training is I tell them diversity trainings don't work. Oh, wait a minute. Reel that back. I don't go fishing, but I'm I'm, I'm reeling it back. Okay. Let, now, I, I, give, I pause for the let, call. And get let, let me reel it back and reel it back forward. Okay, say that again. Diversity trainings don't work. But I designed one, but regular diversity trainings don't work. So what's the difference in what I've designed? Is yeah. it's real simple. Eight hundred and twenty-nine leaders were polled after regular standard diversity trainings, and they were like, "I could have had a V8. <laughs> I could. This could have been an email." All of these things, um, and an email, a tweet, a text, a text. Uh, and like a, a meme. And some of the uh, some of the trainers I've been in, it could have been an emoji. All of that, and it costs companies millions. But why don't they work? They don't work because they're reactive. Mm. And what does that mean? That means wait a minute, wait before you go further. Before you go further, reel that back and say that again. The trainings don't work because they are reactive. And what that do you mean by reactive? That means all of the trainings say you can't send these emails. You can't say this. We'll get sued. It's in reaction to some emails that went out. <laughs> it's in reaction to somebody saying something crazy at the water cooler, sending a weird joke. It's in reaction to 
somebody sending a group text, leaders, uh, real stories, and you're like, what? It's in reaction to that. That doesn't work. That doesn't work. And so what do you do? You be proactive. You have to peel back the layers. You have to reverse engineer. If someone feels like it's okay to refer to a woman on the job as a chick, a dame, babe, right? That's a problem. But where did it come from? They thought it first, right? Then their words followed their thoughts. Their words and thoughts preceded their actions. See, there you go again, telling my business. There you, there you go again, telling on me, putting me on blast. So, okay. So, I need to fix that. You know, uh, let's say, not me per se, but let's say I'm one of those folks at, okay. at the company that, that did the email and, and calling all calling all the women in the office chicks and dames and and and, and, and hey, hey, what's up, babe, and all of that other stuff. Well, what exactly do I need to do? Because that's me, and then I and I don't feel like it's a problem, you okay. know, because. You know, daddy called mama and everybody else, chicks, dames, and and, and and what's up, you know, baby, and all of that other stuff. So why is it a problem? So the most important thing that we do is two things that we do in our training that is powerful. The first thing is we properly define diversity because it's defined wrong in most cases. Really? Yeah, I said what I said. I meant that. <laughs> group, there it is. <laughs> Diversity no. is often defined as differences that people share. And the reality is diversity is an encompassing or an inclusion of similarities and differences. So we immediately, how many trainings have you been to? And they'll say, all right, guys, group up. And then they try to identify the labels. All that does is reinforce separatism. Why would we do that? And I'm telling you right now, I'm always one. And I'm putting my hand up and the rest of y'all put your hand up too. I am always the one that get put in that group. <laughs> that group where you, you know, you looking around and you like, is something wrong with me? <laughs> because... <laughs> You end up in a group with people that look like you or, you know, those types of things. And you're like, okay, nobody sees a problem with this. So here is how we get into dealing with thoughts. And now I'm going to share this with y'all because I love you so much. Mm. I love, love. love. Not, not that not that Valentine's Day love she was talking about earlier. No, no, no. No, no, no holiday at all. Okay, okay. I love to walk into a room full of predominantly white males and they're already tight and they're ready for me to tell them why they owe America an apology. <laughs> and I come in and I say, I have a privilege you don't have. And they're like, what? I say, I can walk into a lady's room and no one will bat an eye. You don't have that privilege. Hmm. I hadn't thought about it that way. And so it begins what? The thought cycle of, okay. And I, I get to help redefine privilege. One of the problems that we're seeing, whether you love or hate media, whether you love or hate social media, is this. A lot of the terms that are relevant to teaching and understanding of diversity and inclusion and all of these things, it's become white noise. The hashtags, you know, it's it's a SEO thing, you know, SEO website. I still got it. <laughs> See, there she go flexing, y'all. There she go flexing. She flexing again. <laughs> and, you know, I, I, and I'll tell you, I'm guilty of them hashtags because I will hashtag, you know, my kids all the time tell me, mama, uh, that's not a hashtag. You don't hashtag everything. And I'm like, shut up. I, I hashtag everything. Yeah. Hashtag know. French fries. Hashtag I just ate a hot dog. Hashtag, hashtag, hashtag. I do it all right. the time. Hashtag, hashtag. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. But that's the thing. And so we come into this conversation and we have we talk about my food and we create an understanding of 
there is education privilege. I once worked at a company where they had 3,000 employees and only 12 people had graduate level degrees and I was one of them. Mm. And so I found myself in meetings with leaders who didn't have the level of education that I had. And I would say something and they would say, well, you know, everybody doesn't have a master's degree. And you're like, what? <laughs> but I do. <laughs> Girl, that's that's a convers that's a conversation for another day. That's that's another episode right there. But I, I, you, you're real. I mean, it's a, it's yeah. a privilege, right? It is a privilege to have the level of education that I have. There are some doors that I can't get in, though, because I only have a master's degree. Right. And, and if I'm trying to get into a conversation with people who have a PhD, they're like, who the sister is this? <laughs> who brought their sister? And you know what? You brought you bring up a great point, because and especially as black women, because, you know, um, we're talking to our sister friends and especially as black women we don't often come in the room we don't often sit at the table uh with that notion of i have a privilege we always come in with the less than or the lack yeah. mentality because that's yeah. just how things have always been presented to us you don't have you ain't got you don't this you don't that yeah. and looking at it from the perspective of i'm coming into this situation with a privilege because yes because black we you know we see the statistics of how black women have you know the highest level of education in the nation um and we do have certain privileges but we don't always uh own up to that yeah and i think that adds to the problem as well but i have a whole statistic out here we product we dominate when it comes to education right but only seven to 17 percent of leaders are black women and it just depends on the industry so that's why there's a range right so in construction that go, goes down toward that seven. Oh my goodness let's not even talk about construction and let's not even talk about government because that's a field that i you know was in and it was many times i would be in the room like hello where, where, where she at where <laughs> You give your line of business. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so I want to circle back to something I said when we were talking about books. You have to decide and give yourself permission. I not only do you own the table, but show up, not like, but as, I'm a word girl, as the leader that you are. I don't care what your title is. I don't care what your title is. I have found myself in more leadership positions than I have leadership roles. Mm -hmm. Look, Speak on as, that. As the, Speak on that. Say, as the preacher would say, I'm going to say it again. I have found myself in more leadership positions than I have leadership roles. Girl, don't please don't have church up in here. Don't have church. It's been so long since we've been in the church. I please don't right. don't have, don't have church up in here today. Yeah, that's not you are so right. You are so right. And we get hung up on those titles. We get hung up on those actual positions when we are doing the work. We are oh, doing wow. the job without those titles and, and those positions. I mean, oh my goodness, you just girl, you just you hit me like a shot of liquor right there. That that one right there hit me like a shot of cognac. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, cognac. That brown. Okay. Oh, that brown. That, that brown. That brown stuff. No, ma'am. We can't do that. No. But you know, here's my call to action for everybody. Homework and, and Tanya probably have flashbacks. I say homework. Oh, but Lord, man, you go. What? She said homework instantly. I instantly went to pigtails and my little uh, Christian school uniform and my Oxford shoes, the black and white Oxford shoes, the and, and the uh, hopscotch. I mean, all them visions just came. Oh, my goodness. Now I got to go see a therapist. <laughs> listen, listen. I want everybody to lean in and get this. I don't care if you are, your title is receptionist. I don't care if your title is coordinator. It is functions that happen 
that can't get done without you. You're a leader. You're a leader. Let's roll roll it back. Okay, now say that again because there's someone out there that that's their that's the word that they needed. That's the word that they needed to get over that hump, that hurdle, whatever it is, that barrier that has been keeping them from moving forward and serving in the greatness. There's yeah. so many of our sister friends out there that's just pigeon held. Say mm-hmm. that again. I don't care what the title is. I don't care if it's receptionist, coordinator. I don't care if it's old school, if it's secretary versus administrative assistant. I don't care. There are functions that can't go down if you don't put your hands on it. Mm. If you don't, if you don't coordinate it, if you don't send the email, if people just lost, what, what, what we gonna do? She took a day off. What, oh my goodness! What, what we gonna do? Ah. Girl, we have a church up in here. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. real life. Oh my and goodness! So my call to action is on that. We own in the table, right? That's right. Own that. Own that, own that, own that. That's part of serving the excellence. That's how we design. We design to do that. That's why when kids get in trouble and things like that, they'll be like, Mama, I need my mama. You an attorney. <laughs> you the pastor. You the chef. All of that. Right? We have learned to wear all of these hats. And we are designed to make things better. So as we are doing that in our every single day life, it can be challenging, especially when, and and things have changed, but there's still more work to go. But I remember growing up and seeing, you know, TV shows where there was an office setting and the black women in those shows were the secretary, if any. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or the male. If they weren't the maid. Right. If there were black men, they were the janitor or the driver. Yes. Right. So that has changed, but it hasn't changed up here. Oh. Now we're looking at those images and it's like, oh, that's fiction. Because that's how we've been conditioned. Okay, let's roll back a little bit what you just said. You said it has changed, but it hasn't changed up here. Can you go a little bit into that? Because I, I, I think some folks is stuck here. There's there's more representation. Of course, we're not we haven't crossed the finish line. We we can pass some mile markers, but there's more representation. Even when you think about college brochures, you know, there's more representation of diversity, similarities and differences. But there's more representation of women learning STEM. That's a real thing. You got women out here doing the thing like that ain't my thing, but. <laughs> But bless it definitely y'all. ain't my thing. Bless y'all, your, your scientists, your engineers, your tech, all of that, your medicine, all of that. But when we see these, the representation of people that look like us, you know, and that can be Asian, you know, because I'm Blasian Black. <laughs> Blasian Black. I, I took the ancestry, trust me, I'm telling the truth. Uh, so, hold on a minute now. Okay. I, I, apologize. I apologize to the dear people out there. I claim all of them. Okay. Okay, Tiger. Go on, go on. Go oh, no, no. No. I said black first. <laughs> I claim all of me. Give me all of my Okay. Okay. We're going to claim it all. As long as we claim it at all. all as long as we are claiming it all. That's all that matters. As long as we are claiming it all. Girl, this one little hat is just driving me crazy. You know how your hat just get on out of place. I'm so sorry, people. I'm so sorry, sister friends. But we all, we all family here. We all family. Look, this is what you do. <laughs> you know, I'm like, hey. But we don't believe the vision anymore it was easier to believe that all office is made up of white men because that's what we saw for so long and so even though there's a progression there it's like oh that's just tv or that's just a commercial it doesn't because the the roots of that 
disconnection. They run real deep. We have to consistently do the work and remind ourselves, and that, that goes to the homework, remind ourselves that we own this table. We good at this. What are you saying to yourself to get rid of that old reprogramming? I'm not a, I didn't do the whole matrix series, but same thing. How do you unplug from that matrix of success means white men? How do you, how are you going to get back to, you know what, Tessa? You can write books. You are, you know, business like nobody. You are a visionary leader. Are you saying those things to yourself? Are you waiting on somebody to give you a title so you can say you're the VP of the CEO of mm -hmm. or how you impact this world? Can't nobody out mother me when it comes to my two children. Can't nobody out mother me. Girl, with who you telling with the three I have? <laughs> and, if somebody, and if somebody want to step in and bring their wallet with them, I'll let you have a trial. Come on, come on. I'll let you have a taste. What I'm saying, <laughs> how, how often we think I'm just a mother. No, uh-uh. I have blood, sweat, tears. Her, had to put on knee pads to pray because I was down there and I was laboring to get them to certain points in their lives. Right? Mm -hmm. Can't can nobody outmother me for them them two. Mm -hmm. No. Nobody can outwife me for Terrence Coleman. Can't do it. Mm -hmm. Right? And I, we already know how I, I was waiting on you to be like, <laughs> nobody can outwife you. <laughs> but at the same time, when I walk up in the, the professional arena, nobody can out visualize me when it comes to marketing. Nobody can out visualize me when it comes to developing trainings that leaders need. Nobody can do that. But see, that's that's where I see a lot of in this and especially black women. And especially um I wanna say black women between the ages of uh let's say 30 and even as old as you know 57 years old i see so and not so much as the the younger ones the, our millennials seem to have this attitude like i am the bomb i came out the bomb i am oh, always be the bomb you know <laughs> and i i love that about them there's some things i don't like but <laughs> i love that about them but some of our middle-aged uh, women, especially black women, we don't come to the table in that way. We are, it's like, like you said, we don't, we're asking for permission. We're, we're asking for permission to be great. We have the greatness. We, we've, we've been great. We, we've been doing, I mean, we, we're doing it all, but we still oh, wow. come to the table, you know, denying who we are. You know, and, and I always use the reference of we we leave ourselves at the door like we take it off like a jacket and hang it up on the rack or coat check it mm -hmm. because like we're afraid to like we can't bring that old ratty jacket into this room with all these, you know, white folks or whoever is in the room. So mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm glad you touched on that because I think that's where that block is mm -hmm. because I know a lot of black women and I'm going to include myself because I'm not going to just say, you know, everybody else. I'm going to include myself mm -hmm. where we talk a good game. We talk that I'm this, I'm that, I'm this, I'm that. You can't tell me nothing else or whatnot. But when we get in the room, we. What you think? What's your opinion? Even when we're being asked. Right. Even when they are giving us a platform. Yeah. So I'm so glad you brought that up. And here's the thing about that. It goes back to stereotypes. Mm. There that word again, y'all. Stereotypes. We ain't talking about that stuff y'all bumpity bump bump in, in your truck. Not the bull in your system. Not no. that. But here's the thing. When it comes to stereotypes, it's it's the the sneaky ones, right? Like that's not ladylike. The ladylike stereotype. Mm. 
ladies are quiet and soft-spoken and dainty and delicate. Well, who they didn't meet this one over here. <laughs> like, well, now that's not you're gonna hear me. Like, that's not true. I guess and I am very much I guess, a I, I guess I ain't a lady. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing. So you have that. And, and just like the example I started out with, with, you know, the angry black woman. With a stereotype like that. Stigmatizes the human experience. Who hasn't gotten angry? My believer, Jesus got angry and turned on some tables. Girl, did he turn them tables? He <laughs> Nobody was like... <laughs> Oh, he an angry white man. Well, he wasn't white, but yes. another story, another time. <laughs> yes. He wasn't an angry brown man. How about that? Cobbling an Asian or whatever. They, right. They, they, Nobody they, said that. Yeah. They were just like, oh, let's go listen to what he's about to say. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that, that's where that censorship comes from. And it becomes something that we do internally, where we start filtering. If I say that, they're gonna think I'm being difficult. Mm -hmm. Girl, I didn't been there. I have been there. The one Wait. that I am is aggressive. Oh, aggressive. aggressive. And then when they try to be politically correct, they just say assertive. assertive. But really, but really, they still mean angry black woman. Right. They still mean. Um, you, you you mean as hell, you know. But well, sometimes I am. But you know, I I mean for me, I mean for me, I mean for me. <laughs> oh, okay, we really I, gonna go there. Yeah. All right, but that's so true. And then when you know I, I engage in these conversations with other black women, with our other sister friends at the table, and and when we have these conversations about the whole angry black woman narrative. And and then I you know and then I say to myself like but why why are we trying to hide okay let's say we are angry okay we have every reason to be right. you know like why is it, that it why isn't it okay for us to be angry about the fact that you know our our husbands are being killed our sons are being killed our daughters are being killed you know. That's reason to be angry. Why, hold on, let me stop you right there. Why are why can't we be angry that our sisters, our daughters, ourselves are being snatched and never heard from again? Like and, and not talked about. And, you know, and we scream from the rooftop. So yeah, you know, not too long ago, you know, someone came at me like that. Oh, you just an angry, bitter, you know, whatever. And I was like, Yes, I am. <laughs> you know, yes, I am. I'm very angry. Yes, yeah. I'm. As a matter of fact, I'm not angry. I'm pissed. Yeah. So you know, don't get it twisted. Let let me let me correct you. No, I'm not angry. I'm pissed, and I have every right to be. But who uh, who gets to determine that narrative? Who oh, gets no. to say that that's who who is creating that definition of us? That and also, who gives a damn if I'm angry? I'm not who gives a damn if I'm angry, but am I not giving you truth and honesty? Yeah, okay. What, that what right you there. meant to say, what you meant to say was, I'm going to focus on the fact that you're angry and because I can't process the information you're giving me. Uh -huh. It's always been this way. Um, some of my best friends are black. You know, my daughter's a woman, whatever, whatever the whatever the narrative is in their head, it really has nothing to do with the passion you're displaying. It is all about them not being able to consume the new information that you are disseminating. Right there. And so I'm going to simplify it and say you just schooled them and they wasn't ready. <laughs> you know, that's all it was. And so when I realized that I was using that stereotype internally as a, a, a gauge or the thermometer, I was like, oh, uh, -uh. because, it, okay, so what if I am angry? Like I'm the only person on the planet who's ever been angry. No. Right. Again, it stigmatizes human emotions. It's a part of how we design. 
if I didn't feel anything, then please get me some help, <laughs> some, some things going on. <laughs> I like mean, that, for real, though. That's real. I mean, you, you're right. It's like you can't win for losing, as I always say. Right. So if you say nothing, you are essentially dying on the inside because you can't, you are not expressing yourself. If you say something, then somebody tells you, you know, you said it wrong. <laughs> I'm like, what's a nice way to say stop killing my people that's going to make you comfortable? Please tell me what that is. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if I'm passionate about it and I like the word passionate because it, it comes from a place of passion and it can be aggressive. It can be assertive. That's all well and good. But I'm giving you facts. I'm giving you truth. And so my sister friends, as Tanya says, you know, not only do you have to figure out what you're filtering with internally, you got to say to hell with this. That's a lot more energy than necessary to spend on that. Yeah. However, God gave it to you, whatever the thought was, you know, he gave it to you for a reason. He didn't ask you to, to spell check it. He didn't ask you to, to soften it so that, again, my believers, when you look at the word, Jesus would say, and the Lord said, blah, blah, blah. He didn't say, this may hurt your feelings. You might not be ready for this. I'm going to figure out a way to say what God told me to say softer. He just got out there and did what he was supposed to do. See, in my version, <laughs> in my version, because you know, I've been a member of the custom ministry for very, very, very long time. I too. Yeah. Part I, 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 you know, since COVID, I've kind of been moved on a little bit. I'm no longer the leader but I'm still a general member. But in my version, you know, he was like, hail to the knob. Like the late great Whitney Houston, hail to the knob. So, uh, I mean, you're you're so on point with, with this. You're so on point and it's so timely. It's so timely because I can't tell you how many terrific sister friends, how many great sister friends I've run across and that's just me little oh me and in my day uh, you know and I see these great women and they're just in this box. you know this box and they ain't moving out of this box they're not mm -hmm. they're not trying to bust out of it they're 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 there and there's so much for them to that they need to do and give in this world because I don't think they really understand that their role and where it's supposed to be um, in, in this universe mm -hmm. and that without that piece, without them, there's something missing. We're <laughs> missing something. Someone is struggling. Someone is, is, is going through something and not getting what they need because they're not there. They're still in that box. So, I mean, I just, I think that this, this this is very timely this is very timely and so where do we go from here this is where we go we have real conversations i not only do i love to walk in a room and say and talk about the privilege i have like you should see the faces it, it's hilarious but also I will start conversations that are uncomfortable. Hey, Tim. I noticed you were looking at my hair in the meeting. Did you have questions? Oh, okay. See, I'm glad you brought that up. Because all throughout elementary school, junior high school, high school, I would always say, Tanya, they would always tell the teacher, Tanya, don't say that. Pipe down. Don't, don't, don't say that. So now you're telling me I can... I can just come on with it. I say come on with it. And I'm glad that you said it that way because, you know, that's the other thing I wanted to mention. You know, sisters, stop giving other scriptures this bad advice. Okay, wait a minute. Let me let me come in. Let me come in a little. Let me come in a little bit on that one. <laughs> say it. Say it again. Sisters, stop telling other sisters giving this bad advice. Of well, don't say nothing. 
They just don't know no better. Oh. Well, don't mention it. You know, it'll cause tension in the office. So meanwhile, I'm feeling beat down and berated, but that's fine because nobody else is affected. It's cool. No. We're going to have these conversations. And we had, we had a very heated fellowship as we developed, you know, we're work, I was working on the design of this, this DEI training. And uh, I had to call my sister friend and be like, girl, I'm on fire in here, man. Because of a concept that I am fleshing out called, y'all ready? Uh-oh, wait a minute. Wait. Hold on, hold on a minute. Hold on. I got to look good when you, when I got to brace myself, but I got to look good when I'm bracing myself. Okay. It's called weaponized privilege. Oh, wait a minute. Say that again. Weaponized privilege. We've already talked about everybody got privilege. Uh-huh. I got privilege, you got privilege. The problem isn't privilege, so we can stop saying that. The problem though, is when we weaponize the privilege, when we make it a weapon to oppress, suppress, dominate, uh, utterly destroy other people because we have a privilege they don't. That is weaponized privilege. You heard it here first. Mm. Girl, okay, Tarkessa just, she just went on and laid that out like a buffet, not hometown, but she just went on and laid that out like a buffet. So you mean to tell me, and I hadn't thought about it that way. That really, and when I say that, that hit me, that one didn't hit me like cognac. That one hit me like a B12 shot, because them bad boys hurt. <laughs> Well, that ain't really good, but there you get them in your butt. So them bad boys, they hurt. Yeah, they sting. Yeah, and that's stung because that's exactly what we have been dealing with as a people, and we have called it everything else. Mm -hmm. We call it racism. We call it sexism. We call them whatever isms. Right. But that's exactly. What it has been, weaponized privilege. Yes. And if y'all can keep a secret, I can I can say that in in the near future there will be a published paper and also a book on that. I'm just putting it out there, but don't tell nobody. Oh my goodness. Well, you shouldn't have told me because I, I I run my mouth. I'm telling everybody. Matter of fact, when we finish, I'm I'm a hashtag and and, and do all that all on social media. Hashtag, hashtag. I'm a hashtag some hashtags. Okay. Right. But when I got to the understanding of weaponized privilege, it was something to work through with my team because my team is white male. And they were like, oh, weaponized? That's mm -hmm. And I was like, exactly. Mm -hmm. Right? The problem is not you being a white male. That's who, that's who you are. The and see, I think, I think that's the issue that we're having right now with people because they're people, you know, uh, as people are getting called out, uh, per se, you know, these days. I think the issue is people are getting uh, defensive because it's like automatically, oh, I'm a white woman or I'm a white man. So it automatically, you know. No. Okay. No. So that's not the issue. No. That's not that's not the call out that we should be making. No. No. You weaponized the privilege. You were born into that privilege. I was born a fabulous black woman. <laughs> Who you telling? What? What else? I mean, I'm not gonna apologize for that gift. But now, if I use that to say, well, we're only gonna do this diversity training for black people. We're not white men aren't accepted into this training. That's the problem. And the only way to get into my organization and work is that you have to have this training. Do you see the problem? It's weaponized. I'm using it as a weapon. 
Mm -hmm. I'm using it to disenfranchise a people. I'm mm -hmm. using it to prevent them from walking in equity, not to be confused with equality, because it's different. Look it up, or we'll have to talk about it next time. Equity. When you weaponize privilege, it prevents a sect, a group, a whole community from walking in equity. Girl, this has been a shut your mouth session right here. <laughs> shut, shut your lips, <laughs> girl. Oh, shut your face. <laughs> Ooh, shut your, you know, teacher, you go, shut your lip. I'm telling you, I mean, it really has been an eye opener for me um, hearing you say this because just looking at it from that perspective. And then being able, not just looking at it from that perspective, and then looking back, you know, with that, with those lenses on, and then now thinking about, okay, how we move forward with that, how we move forward in in in, in that, right, you know, right. with the weaponized privilege, and not so much as you're just being a racist towards me, or yeah. you know, the bullying or whatever, but the but call it what it is which is weaponizing your privilege yes mm. see the light bulb that's the moment girl that that's one of them feeling you know how you didn't want you didn't heard a good sade song <laughs> smooth i'm ready like mm. like mm, mm, mm. oh i tell you that is just i mean I, I, I'm I'm speechless right now because it it truly is weaponized privilege. That is the problem. And and like what what is it, Radio Shack? <laughs> you got questions, we got answers. Girl, right? you, did you say Radio Shack? <laughs> did you say radio uh, Radio Shack? How long I don't know how I know that with my young self. Girl, oh. please. <laughs> You just been told on on all on yourself. I don't know nothing about no radio shack. What's that? Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. But once you have that understanding and you get to that aha of okay, this is how that applies, it becomes a much different conversation because that is much, much better than walking in a room and saying You're a racist. You're a racist because you have white privilege. Um, here's your indictment. You're a racist, right? Okay, the indictment part. The indictment part. I think that's where folks is having a real hard time right now is the indictment part. Yes. Yeah. And it's like you are sentenced to forever be a racist because you were born white. <laughs> that's not how this look. That's not how any of this works. Right. And so with that, we get into the crucial conversations and the unpacking of the inside and there's a little game i love to play in in the training and it's called um blind spot bias or racism everyone's answer is always different mm. girl you see see wait a minute now you are giving out just way too too much today you are well, giving you are giving tea soda you know you 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 giving out way too much. How like, do you like if I don't share that? I mean, people pay so much money to get just get a tidbit of what you sharing today. I do. And I so appreciate you for for being willing to share, you know, to to the sister friends, to our sister friends out there, because uh, not everybody is doing that. And you know, I talk about them resource hoggers all the time. Oh, oh. I see y'all out there. I see you. I'm waiting. I heard it. <laughs> I see you. Share. It's enough wealth for all of us. Uh, what's the worst that can happen? You know, somebody <laughs> and they start sharing. And what? We don't have these problems anymore. Dang. What's the worst that can happen? Somebody get hurt. Somebody eyes get open. 
Well, I tell you this. I have one question for you. Okay. Um, one question for you. If what would be that one burning advice that for black women? that you would share with them today before we leave? Like, what is that one thing that you say, oh, they, they have to know this. This is the one thing that I want my sister friends to know. What is that? The one thing uh, that I want my sister friends to know is this. At the, not even at the end of the day, but at the end of life, when you look back, you will have impacted more lives and impacted the world in tremendous ways that some people can't even imagine. You bring life into the world. You create human beings. You absolutely deserve to take your spot at the table. That's what I would want my sister friends to know. Without you, babies can't they they don't they cease to exist there's no more making of human beings like if you're not walking in the room with that understanding of who you are god could have done it without us but he chose not to you think that was a mistake you think that somebody's weaponized privilege takes away the fact that god hand picked women to bring life into this world and and not just baby's life but to bring life that's what we do that's what i want sister friends to know like small. stop stop playing small <laughs> stop <laughs> you cut it out girl so you about to have me over here having a moment no, I'm telling you, that's just, I mean, that's so beautiful. That's real life. And um, I can't thank you enough for coming and sharing and dropping them nuggets, girl, golden nuggets. And I'm not talking about the casino. <laughs> I cannot tell you how appreciative I am for you to come to the table and share those golden nuggets. Because everything you said today is relevant and timely real life and you know and there's so much more in you we're gonna have to have you come back and and, and, yeah, and yeah. give some more you know we're gonna have to have you come back because if y'all don't know miss tarkessa is a regular sister friend of the we own the table show and this was just the introduction you know so i'm just afraid what the rest of the season is gonna look like <laughs> if this is just an introduction I mean, she was just, she was, I mean, girl, we, the only thing we didn't do today was drop it like it was hot. So, <laughs> so, you know, we're going to have to hold off on that one. But, it might not be my area of expertise, or it might be. Stay tuned. We don't, oh, well, girl, we don't know what to come. <laughs> but really, no, in all seriousness, I really do appreciate you and I really do appreciate this word and I appreciate you being vulnerable enough to share because so many people aren't. Um, so many people um, are holding on to what they know that can really release folks mm -hmm. and people need to be released these days. So I appreciate your words. I appreciate everything about you. Uh, I appreciate your spirit spirit uh and you got to let the sister friends know how can because this ain't the only place they can find you how yeah. can the sister friends find you please tell everybody where, yes. where you at what you doing how, how can they get to you listen uh, don't call you. me y'all don't be calling me don't be sending me all them don't be dming me uh right. I need talk, uh, yeah, two, 2 a.m i'm getting ding 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 give me talk talk, talk Kess's number you know, I, don't be doing, don't do me like that. Put me on the spot. Well, like first of all, it's, it's social media. You can find me on LinkedIn. TT Colvin MBA. That's me. Find me. 
Um, I'm giving them statistics that you need to help flip the switch. If you think this is just a passion project, I got the numbers to back it up. Um, so I'm dropping them leadership stats. I'm dropping them women in leadership stats, all of that. Um, so please connect with me on LinkedIn. And the other thing is just come straight to me, TessaColvinConsulting.com. You can find me and uh, we can have a real conversation because Tanya know I keep it real. <laughs> I keep it real. I'm going to tell you where you are and where you need to be. And then we're going to figure out how to close the gap between the two. Girl, I'm telling y'all, sister friends, don't don't knock if you ain't ready for the door to be open. I'm going to tell you that right now. Don't don't be calling on Ty Castle and you ain't ready for the come on. If you if you over there playing games with yourself and you ain't really quite ready, you might want to hold on a little bit. You might want to hold on just a little bit longer, get get it together, then really go. Cause cause I'm telling you, she ain't playing. No, she ain't playing at all. She ain't playing at all. Well, Tarkessa, it has been great. And like I said, you have you have made it rain over here. <laughs> we made it rain. Okay. <laughs> I've always wanted to do that. But I am. I can't do it with my money. I do it with somebody else. I'm gonna make it rain one of these days. But <laughs> but you have made it rain. You have brought so much information and knowledge and just the foresight. Um, I thank God for you. And I thank God that He has brought you here to the table. So, you know, with that being said, may God continue to bless you. Because we Christians over here, y'all. So if, if some of y'all didn't know, and if you get offended by that, I'm so sorry that you're offended. Really, I'm not sorry, but I'm just saying I'm sorry because it is politically correct, but I'm not politically correct. But we Christians around here. And um, I thank God for you. And, um, and I, you know, God is doing great things in your life. And so many doors are going to be blown open because so many people need to hear this message. So many people need this. So I appreciate you, sister friend, and, you know, here we are rounding up another episode of We On The Table, because we're not going to beg, borrow, or steal any longer. We own the table. And y'all, you know, I understand that we talk about, hey, if they don't give you a seat, bring your chair. No, don't be dragging no lawn chairs, because some of y'all ain't even bringing folding chairs. Some of y'all out here bringing them riggedy rackety uh, plastic chairs that be leaning over to the side when it's been too long, or you got them sitting out there and the sun is all cracked up. Stop bringing them raggedy chairs to the table. They don't give you a seat at the table. Don't worry about it because you own the table. We we created the table. We made the table. We built the table. Sit right on top of it because it belongs to you. So with that being said, thank you all. Uh, for another great episode of We Own the Table, and we had a wonderful guest, Tarkessa Colvin, uh, and she goes by Tessa. I call her Tessa, but she's trying she try to be brand new today, but that's all right. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs>